risk right now not owning Bitcoin than having it. Oh my like, God. Like not having it is screwing you more than, have, that's, than having that's it. A, that's an insane statement. Yeah. What is going on you guys? Bitcoin and Ethereum are all over the place across the news. And as said best by Andrew Jick, you know, you're taking a risk by not getting into Bitcoin or Ethereum. So with that, there's gonna be a whole bunch of people getting into the game here. And I'm sure this is why you're here. And you're wondering how you should get Bitcoin or how you can acquire Bitcoin and Ethereum without getting scammed. The scammers are going crazy right now because there's a bunch of new people that are getting into the game and they don't know what they're doing. So if you wanna learn how to do it and how to do it right, this is the video for you. Stick around, let's get into the video. Cue intro. To begin with, we're gonna look at different brokerages. So you're gonna either wanna stick with Coinbase or Gemini. There's lots of other scams out there, so don't put your money into something that isn't backed by anything. So make sure to do research on this. And my recommendations would either be Coinbase or Gemini. I personally use Coinbase and I have had really good luck with it. Um, the other day it did shut down and I wasn't able to get in for a couple minutes. That was due to the extreme trading amount of people that were getting in and out of Bitcoin. But other than that, I was able to get in a couple minutes later. It has worked out really well. So the other one is Gemini and that's made by the Winklevoss twins. And if you don't know who they are, they're basically the people that initially invested into Bitcoin and they own a lot of percent of Bitcoin. And so they wanted to make a way to be able to trade Bitcoins and cryptocurrencies easier. And so they made Gemini. One thing to look out for is places like Robinhood. And with Robinhood, you're not actually owning any Bitcoin. It's just a representation of Bitcoin and it's not backed by anything. So at any time they could just take it off and you could lose your money. So you wanna put it in something where you're actually able to accrue the Bitcoin and you're able to take it off into cold storage if you would like. Whereas if you were to do it with Robinhood, you wouldn't be able to do that. You would just be basically like a stock, except that it's not backed by the FDIC. Okay, so for actually creating your account now for the good stuff, for the fun stuff, I'm gonna be doing it in coinbase.com and I'm gonna be showing you that because that's what I personally use. However, if you wanna do it in Gemini, that is completely fine. Um, or if you wanna do it in Coinbase Pro, they tend to have smaller fees. Um, we're not gonna do that at this time, we're just gonna be using the regular account. But if you want to upgrade in the future, I will make a video on that or you can just look up a video on how to do that. So first off, you have to be at least 18 years of age or older. You need a government issued ID. You need a computer or a smartphone and that's all you need. So now going in and creating your actual account, go to coinbase.com, click get started. You're gonna do your full first name, last name, your email address, your password, your state and you're gonna create click account. Then you're gonna go and you're gonna verify your email address. And um, you're gonna basically verify that that email that you put in is legitimate. So then you will be getting into verifying your phone number. So you wanna have as many touch points as you can with Coinbase because if you lose your Bitcoin, you lose it for good. So they're gonna be going and getting your phone number and verifying that. The next one is adding your personal information, first name, last name, date of birth, address, um, why you're using Coinbase, and then your last four digits of your social security number. So if you don't feel comfortable with doing that, just keep that in mind beforehand. Um, and then you're gonna be verifying your identity. So as soon as you sign in to your Coinbase account, and this is where I kind of messed up on and this is why I didn't get into Bitcoin as soon as I wanted to. You know, I was looking at it at the $10,000 range. I was super pumped. You know, I was just ready to roll. And then I actually went to make my account and I, it wasn't working for some reason. So I was like, oh my gosh. And then it starts going up and then I missed out. I ended up getting in a little later, but basically you need to verify your ID. So you need to complete ID verification, which is where you put in your driver's license and um, another step that you can do is have a two-step verification app so you can get an app that verifies on your phone so if someone were, someone were to take your laptop then you wouldn't be completely screwed because they would still need access to your phone and sign in through your phone would highly recommend doing that 
the next item is link a payment method. So there are multiple ways to do this. You can do it through credit card, debit card, or your bank account or a wire transfer. However, there's only one, in my mind, good way to do it, and that is through your bank account. If you do it through a credit card or a debit card, the fees are extremely high, and you don't want to be paying three or four percent for a for a fee, as with credit card and debit card. But it's not. There's no fee if you do it through your bank account. So that would be my recommendation. Don't be doing it through your debit card. You're paying way too much. There are also multiple ways to verify your bank account. One is where Coinbase sends you a couple of cents and you verify how many cents were in that bank account just to make sure that they have the right bank account. Or, and this is what I did, is you just log in directly through the Coinbase app into your bank account and then it verifies it that way. And that way is a lot faster. Coinbase does take a fee for doing all the Bitcoining stuff for you, and that is a 1.49% fee. So watch out for that. And if it's under $100, um, it varies. Um, as you can see here, there's like a breakdown for if you were to spend equal to or less than $10, the fee is 99 cents. So it's less than 1.49%. However, over $100, the 1.49% is the higher fee. So that is what is chosen for Coinbase. All right, now for the funnest part of the video, actually buying the Bitcoin, Ethereum, or cryptocurrency. You're gonna go to your crypto that you want. You're gonna click on the trade button. You're then gonna go buy ETH, and then you're gonna click on the amount that you want to purchase. Once that shows up, you're gonna click on preview buy and this will give you a preview of the fee and how much ETH or Bitcoin or cryptocurrency that you're buying. You will then press buy now once you want to confirm. Let that load up a little bit and wait for it. Your order has been submitted and you are now a Bitcoin or ETH or cryptocurrency holder. Congratulations. Congratulations, you have officially bought your first Bitcoin or Ethereum or altcoin, whatever it be. That is an accomplishment for sure, but you're not out of the thick of it yet. And the most interesting part is still to come, and that is where you want to put your Ethereum next. And you can put it in one of two places. You can either put it in a hot wallet or you can put it in a cold wallet. And so what you can do, and what I'm gonna be going over first, is your hot wallet. And so your hot wallet is essentially what it is in right now. And that is where you can buy in and out of Ethereum, Bitcoin, different altcoins, doesn't matter. But you can easily trade in and out of them. Or what you can do inside of a hot wallet is you can transfer it over to this place called BlockFi. And then it can earn 8% interest for you. And that's an interesting way to do it because if you hold your Bitcoin or your Ethereum for over a year, you get different tax exemptions for this. So if you want to hold it long term, um, putting it into BlockFi is definitely an option to look at. Make sure to do research before you obviously do it, but um, definitely take a look at BlockFi because you can earn 8% interest on your Bitcoin or Ethereum. So the next thing that you want to look at is the cold storage. And this is this is probably one of the cooler things about Bitcoin and Ethereum and cryptocurrencies in general. And that is being able to take it completely offline. It's this little thumb drive looking thing. You create a password and a bunch of passphrases and only you know those passphrases and passwords because if, you know, if anyone else does, then they can get into this and you don't want that. However, if you lose the passphrases and the password, then you lose everything, you can't get into it. So in a hot wallet, cryptocurrency is not fully safe. However, in a cold wallet, cryptocurrency is completely safe. So when choosing between which wallet you wanna have it in, you know, the cold, the cold storage is a pretty cool option. However, if you wanna have it liquid, you want to have your cryptocurrencies liquid, you want to be able to trade in and out of cryptocurrencies, or you want to have it earn interest upon itself, then you want to go with the hot wallet. So other videos will be coming out on how to actually like create a BlockFi account and be able to switch your cryptocurrency over to BlockFi and have it earn interest. Now that you've learned how to actually acquire Ethereum or other cryptocurrencies, 
please take the force and use it wisely and don't overextend yourself. Don't put in so much money to where you can't even think you're just stressing out the whole day. None of us want that. And what I did personally is I just took my stimulus money, it was extra money that came in and I said, here you go, let's see what happens. So that's my recommendation. However, do whatever the heck you want. Just make sure to do your research on it and I hold zero liability. The last and final thing would be to hodl Bitcoin and Ethereum or any other cryptocurrency because of tax reasons. If you hold it for over a year, you get less of a percentage taken out of your cryptocurrency. So I hope this video helped. It was fun to make. It took a lot of time. So if you want to give it a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. And uh, let's see, we got, okay. So in the next video, I'm going to be doing a 600 to $10,000 challenge with the stimulus check and we'll see we'll see what we're doing there so make sure to stay tuned like subscribe hit the bell see you in another video deuces